What's happening guys? Silent Mike checking in with a brand new series which gives you the opportunity to be coached by me. We're going over some form checks. We're going over some technique. We have a couple different lifters here uh, with a couple different lifts. So uh, first off, I'd like to keep all the comments positive. We're all trying to learn. Um, and also for those that I am critiquing, also be good at taking a uh, critique. Be coachable. Try to take it um, positive. And I'm going to pick you apart, but it's only because I want you to get better. So checking out homie's bench. It looks pretty dang solid, actually. The setup's really, really good. Obviously, your heels are off the ground, so that depends on the federation you want to compete in. Uh, but otherwise, it's fine. Make sure you're flexing those quads, forcing those knees out. Get those glutes a little bit tighter. Even on that liftoff, you can see your shoulders get popped out a little bit. On the way down, uh, everything looks fairly solid, except for I'd like to see your elbows in front of the barbell a little bit more uh, at the paused position while the weight's on your chest. So that means touch maybe a hair higher towards your neck or pull those elbows in and keep that tension on your back. Um, it's a very slight heave uh, that we're seeing. Uh, and then number two uh, would be a little bit straighter wrist. Uh, it's okay for your wrist to be cocked back to a hair, uh, but I'll get that weight a little bit more in the palm of your hand. Uh, and last tip I suggest is pressing really hard back towards that rack. You're pressing a little bit in a straight line. Uh, that can also happen because of the elbow position off the chest. So take your time. Uh, focus in, really press up and back towards that rack, back over eye level. Obviously, a lift off during the whole entire thing uh, can help, can make it better. Moving on to some squats. I like the shirt, my man. Anyone that wants to snag some Reebok gear, I always got my link to my store at Reebok. All my favorite shit in the description below. Squats are generally looking um, very, very good. Uh, first thing that I noticed right away is that belt. I'm not a huge fan of the style of belt. I don't think it gives you uh, as much material to press and Valsalva breathe into, so a powerlifting belt may help. Uh, number two would be to loosen that belt a little bit. I can see it's cinched in real tight. Uh, the point of the belt is to, yes, add some support, but you're actually not going to tighten the belt on your spine, per se. You know, It's actually not doing anything. It's about the pressure you can create with your stomach breathing into uh, your diaphragm, into your sides, into your low back, and pushing out into that belt that really uh, creates that intra-abdominal pressure to support your spine. So you're really creating that pressure. The belt is just a tool uh, to allow you to breathe a little bit harder. Uh, number two would be is I would control that eccentric descent a little bit. Although the weights are semi-light, you can see that you're losing tension on the way down because as you try to rebound out of the hole, you get pitched forward a little bit. Um, now that may be the heeled shoe, it's hard to tell, um, but it also may be that you're losing tension on the way down, so then when you try to press back into the bar, hips shoot up because you're coming back under tension, um, and then you finish the lift. Again, because it is kind of light, you'll be able to muscle through it uh, just fine, but under heavier weights, that will show even more so. So what I recommend is um, a little bit uh, upgrade in the belt if finances allow, which you got those fresh kicks on, so I bet you can grab yourself a dope belt. If not, ask for Christmas, Hanukkah, birthday present, Valentine's Day, whatever holiday you want, but try to get some. Uh, new belt, really uh, practice on a little bit looser belt, pushing out into it, uh, and then take your time on the way down. Think about spreading the floor. Open your knees. I like to think about opening my knees out and forward, especially with your style of squat, as I'm descending. Um, and then pulling myself into the ground, although uh, as though the bottom of my feet are magnets. I'm pulling myself into the ground, pulling my hips uh, and my glutes and my hams into my ankles, uh, keeping that tension and winding up and then exploding back out of that hole. Uh, when you're training, uh, you'll probably move a little bit slower than when you're actually going to compete. You can always speed things up, uh, but you'd rather be under control and slow things down. Moving on to some deadlifts. We got some straps action. Um, I do like straps. I know you guys probably see me use them a lot. I think they're a good tool to kind of stay symmetrical and stay safe. Um, but if you have any kind of grip problems, I think they can mess you up. And I also think that if you're a little bit newer of a lifter, it can mess up some of the mechanics in your lifting because it is uh, different than an over-under grip. Um, overall, I'd say this deadlift's really, really, really solid. Uh, one thing I'd probably say to experiment with uh, is a more narrow stance. That'll allow you to drop your hips just a hair probably, um, although the hip position's really, really solid, back position's really, really solid, but what I'm seeing is a little bit of space between your arms, your legs, and your body. Uh, and if you move your 
legs in, uh, it will reduce the range of motion a little bit. And what it'll allow you to do is continue to move your hands in and flex that back a little bit harder. Um, you know, end of the game, inches, leverages, all that, you want to make it most optimal. So I'd experiment with a uh, hip, uh, just in from your hip uh, width stance. Move that grip in right outside your legs, kind of like it is now, but with the narrower stance. And then what you want to do is get those elbows pointing behind you towards your hips. That's really going to cue you again to cover your armpit with your shoulders, flex your lats really, really hard, um, and everything else is looking really solid. I know you got those hex plates. They're bouncing you around a little bit. There's a little bit of gap between your legs um, on each reset because those plates are bouncing around. But uh, try to get your weight back. Point those elbows backwards like you're bending the bar around your shins. Pinkies together behind your back kind of deal. Hopefully that makes some sense. Bending that bar, twisting, torquing those shoulders. I did not say twerking. Torquing those shoulders behind you. Weight back and pull. Again, experiment with a closer stance. With all these tips, uh, something you guys should know in powerlifting that because a tweak is made, uh, because something may be um, off with your form or more optimal with your form that you're improving or working on doesn't mean it will automatically equal PRs, more weight on the bar, more reps, and it won't, won't, I repeat, won't automatically feel more comfortable or better. As you're adjusting to anything, we're going to have to break bad habits. And any habit you have, whether it's good, bad, the other, uh, is what's going to feel more comfortable and probably strongest at the moment. So when I say uh, some of these coaching cues. When I say I would experiment with this or try this, you got to give it, you know, a good uh, three, four, maybe even six weeks of practice with reps, reps, reps in a submaximal manner, so you can build new good habits and then finally see. Uh, you know, the purpose of good form and good technique is to, yes, lift the most weight, but that's coming about through different ways. It's not just going to allow you to lift more weight. It's going to allow you to stay healthier longer, which in the long run, you'll lift more weight. It'll also allow you to lift more efficiently. Um, better leverages, the more efficient you can lift, the more volume and training you can handle um, in, in, in a long term and a short term. And the more volume you can handle, the more efficient you are at the movement, the stronger you'll be long term. So again, it doesn't mean these tweaks will automatically, something will just click and you're going to start crushing 50 pound PRs. But if you make small tweaks over a long period of time, do the small things that allow you to get better, uh, you will feel better, maybe stay more injury free, handle more volume and get stronger in the long run. Good deadlift my man. What do we got next? That's slow modo. Look at those triceps popping up and down. I see you, bro. I see you. We got some squats. Beltless. I dig it. He tucked the shirt in just so I could see what the heck's going on. I like it. Nice big breath. Solid. Solid. So what I would suggest for you is um, you're breaking at the knees first, which is absolutely fine. You know, there's a big argument about if you should break at the knees, the hips, or the knees and hips simultaneous. What I would say for you, um, based on this squat, is I would try to uh, work on, focus, or practice uh, breaking at the hips first, just for this lifter in particular. Because it looks like you run out of depth. Um, you start shoving those knees forward. Uh, we also want to keep forcing those knees out. And then to come back up, your hips are wiggling around to kind of find the place they want to go. So um, a little bit forward lean on a squat is okay. We just want to maintain that degree of uh, torso lean. I, I did a video on that if you want to check a couple of videos back. But basically what I'd like to see is you break at the hips keeping that Valsalva, bracing your core tight, hips back and knees out simultaneous at the start of your squat, and then continue to force those knees out, force those knees forward. Um, your knees are kind of shaped down, and when your knees are shoving down, it uh, means your weight's probably on your toes, and it also means that it's going to be harder for you to hip depth. You're basically, your knees are running away from your hip, and the definition of depth in almost every powerlifting federation or Instagram coach referee in the world is that your hip crease must reach the top of your knee. And so if your knee is going further down and away from you, you're chasing away from it, as you can see in that slow-mo. So if you break at the hips first, a little bit more vertical shin throughout your entire squat. Again, this goes for this guy's exact form and build, not everybody. Um, I think you will be better off long term. Everything else looks really solid. Um, back looks fairly tight. A hair uneven, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would keep focusing on squeezing that back, breathing into your glutes, or excuse me, breathing into your stomach, your sides, your low back, just above your glutes. 
Squeezing your glutes at the start and then shifting your hips backwards, getting a little bit torso lean going because of your bar position and how you're built. Knees out, hips back at the start, drive into that bar hard. Awesome job, my friends. I do appreciate you guys. If you'd like to send in your video, what I need from you guys is a widescreen horizontal landscape video as high quality as you can. I need uh, a couple different angles if you can. Send in one lift, just one lift, squat, bench, deadlift, overhead, or something in particular. Using about 70 to 75% of your one rep max and show me a couple triples. Appreciate it, guys. Thumbs up. Subscribe. We're out of here. Until next time.